Right, this is another video filmed with my new lens. So I posted uh, the first test video as the previous, uh, the, the most recent other video. Um, and I had a few questions about it on Instagram, so I thought I'd just sort of chat about it a bit while recording this. Um, actually, before I start, in case I want to change the camera settings. Um, so basically, this is the f1.4 30mm lens, um, and I've got a Sony uh, a6400, which I would highly recommend if you're looking for a camera for 4K videos. Uh, it's very good. Uh, and incidentally, if you're familiar with Kurt Hamley's videography and photography, he's also using this camera. So it's, um, it's a popular choice because it's the cheapest, best 4K camera or one of them going probably, if not, based on my research, the best. So I highly recommend it. And this is the Sigma 30mm prime lens, which means that I can't zoom at all, which is why I'm cropped a bit closer. Uh, I used to use the kit lens at a slightly shorter distance, so I, it was a wider angle. Um, but the, the advantage to this is that the kit lens only went down to, I think, 3. f 3.5 maybe a little lower but certainly nowhere near 1.4 and I can actually demonstrate hopefully I can't see the settings on the camera but um, if I can change them as I go so this is actually just gone beyond what it can um, reasonably do at f 1.4 so this should be in focus I'm looking for my focus clipping yeah so there is pure focus and then you just lose focus so quickly going backwards and then what I'm looking to film at is something in the region of that f2.2 so you get a nice band of focus but the background's still a bit softer and it's got a really nice softness to it which you get that's called Boca I'm not sure how it's Boca I'm not sure how it's supposed to say it but uh, B-O-K-E-H is the term for what a camera looks like when it's out of focus and a nicer lenses give a nicer um, effect there. And there was nothing wrong with the um, kit lens but I found that when it was in focus it wasn't super sharp and then obviously it couldn't be pushed to quite as um, soft, uh, such a narrow depth of field as this one can. Um, probably don't need to go to the extreme that this can, which so this is filmed at f uh, 2.0, which is two stops back, um, and is probably a nicer compromise. But um, the lens is surprisingly cheap. Anyone that's familiar with camera lenses and their prices, generally speaking, a good lens can set you back as much as the camera body. Um, and the 6400, just switch, switch from the dark clay to the light clay, it always catches me out just how much softer this is, or can be from the bag. It's more like porcelain. Um, yeah, 6400 with the kit lens is about £1,000, and this lens is about 250 um, some of the nicer Sigma zoom lenses for this camera can get up to about £1,000, but £250 for a really good prime is still quite not very reasonable. I also got uh, the Sony 30mm macro, um, which I really got because it's so cheap. Again, lenses often being more than the body of the camera. The macro is um, it's 170, I think I paid for it. So uh, very reasonable, and I don't think I have that much cause for macro photography, but some of my places could do with it. Um, so I'll be playing with that more over the coming weeks. I might try some videos with it, I'm not sure how well that will work. The whole point with the macro lens is that it can focus essentially as close
close as you can get without touching the lens, more or less, which means you can get very, very close to the thing and see it in great detail, where a normal lens won't quite have that range. Um, so you're always, you can zoom in as much as you want and then after that you're having to crop down. Um, so macro lenses let you get significantly more detail just because you're that much closer, so you're getting more pixels of the bit you want. Um, but yeah, we'll see how that one goes. But hopefully what you're getting with this lens now is, I know the focal band is kind of this, this distance. Um, the problem is that most of the things in that range are moving now. Um, so the extent to which this all looks out of focus really depends how quickly I move my hands, I think. Because <laughs> you should see my hands in focus even if the pot itself is a bit of a blur and then everything else is a bit of a blur. Um, hopefully you can also see my new Don't Feed the Bears t-shirt. Um, my other love as well as pottery is cooking and it is uh, Chef Bear. So you can sort of see it's all cookery themed things. Um, absolutely love it and I like the new, it's quite subtle but they've gone for a darker grey than some of their other ones which I really like on this. So they also have hoodies which it's too warm in here uh, for me to be wearing but got one of their new hoodies as well. But yeah, they've got a few new designs and then I think they've got a few more that came out either have come out or were coming out after this that I didn't know about I might have waited before placing an order but um, if you haven't checked them out do uh, I'll post a link to that as well in the comments below and yeah let me know what you think of the different depths that um, I kind of had at the start. I might post a few more just kind of the ASMR style non-narrated videos but at different um, f-stops so you can see the different depths of field that this lens can do because in theory I could use it like I did my old camera up to my old lens and just um, if I get it physically further away from the wheel, uh, the composition will be more similar to the way it was. Um, and then it's just a case of what settings I use. Um, but the advantage as well that you probably can't see in this, but maybe you can, um, is that the way... So the f-stop refers to the aperture size. The lower the number, the bigger the aperture. The size of the aperture determines how much light gets in. And what that means is that by using the, um, the larger aperture, the lower f-stop, so when I go down to 1.4, for example, um, you, you can control the amount of exposure a picture or video has a few different ways. So it's a, a combination of shutter speed, aperture size, and ISO. So the ISO is essentially a multiplication of what the image sensor receives, on a digital camera at least. Um, and the higher that number is, the more the kind of graininess, the slight random variation between pixels gets amplified. So at a really high ISO you can take pictures in near complete darkness but what you get is you don't get that smooth real looking effect, you get more noise, you get grain and um, that's because these small variations are amplified so ideally you want to be using a low ISO um, but that means the picture is going to be darker so most of the time you can't. Um, I can't remember exactly, but I think on the old 
lens with this, this sort of setup, I'd have been using, well, I mean, I kind of guess, if I was using F3-ish, 3.5, I reckon I was generally using an ISO of around 1000. But if I'm using f1.4, I can use an ISO of 100, which is the lowest this camera will go to. So the picture quality is the best it can possibly be in terms of noise from ISO. So you can take faster pictures, you can take pictures in lower light, and you can take pictures with less noise by having um, a bigger aperture, a lower f-stop. And that's why a lens like this is so desirable. Because if I were to try and film things at night, this lens would beat my old lens, absolutely no question. Obviously, you are still having a different depth of field, so it's a, you're not comparing exactly the same thing. But um, the ability to open the aperture up this much uh, really helps. And the fact that this is still a wider aperture by a few stops than I was used to before should mean that you see less noise. Now, I, I never really noticed it as a problem um, with the old setup, so you probably can't see it. And by the time you're watching this on YouTube, it will have gone through editing software and been compressed into YouTube and been compressed. So you probably can't tell, but it is one of the, the other advantages to having this set up. Anyway, I will link to all the things that I've talked about in the um, video description. Uh, if you've got any questions, let me know. I'm not a camera expert, but I, well, technically I have a qualification in it because I did it for A-level, but that was quite a long time ago, and digital cameras were not comparable then to what they are now so um, the, the actual usable knowledge I have is mostly from just mucking around with stuff myself so I'm no expert but I might be able to answer something if you've got any questions but um, the main thing is if you have any thoughts on the composition of this and the, the quality and whether you want I know people like seeing stuff in the shelves and the t-shirt so the idea will be not to completely obscure those even if I do go for the more arty um, narrow depth of field but uh, yeah let me know what you think please